you have sphere x that carries a charge of four times ten to the minus 18 coulombs while sphere y has an axis of 30 electrons right and the first question 10.1 is saying let's calculate the magnitude of the charge on sphere y let's calculate the magnitude of the charge on sphere y so let's gather our information and see which formula we can use right so we're given the number of electrons on sphere y right and then another thing we know is the charge of an electron although it is not given to us in this equation it is a constant minus 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19. so what are we looking for again we're looking for the magnitude of the charge on uh, sphere y right so there's a formula that says that the number of electrons in a charge is equal to the charge of the sphere divided by the charge of an electron right so you can see here that we have the number of electrons we have the charge of an electron so now we're going to be able to find q so what is the number of electrons uh, we are told that uh, we have 30 electrons in axis right and then q which is what we're looking for divided by the charge of an electron which is minus 1.6 times 10 to the minus 90. now it's just a matter of cross multiplying so we're going to get q being equals to 30 multiplied by minus 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 so the charge on sphere y is equal to minus 4.8 times 10 to the minus 18 columns let's move to 10.2 so 10.2 is saying that the spheres are now released and they move towards each other give a reason why spheres x and y move towards each other so let's look at x x is positive as uh, we can see right on our sketch x is positive and then on the other hand y is negative right and then we know fully well that unlike charges attract right so the reason x and y are gonna move towards each other it is because unlike uh, charges attract right if uh, they were like charges they were going to move away from each other because like changes repel and then 10.3 the spheres are allowed to touch each other after touching they move away from each other 10.3 says that uh, let's state the principle of conservation of charge so the total charge in an isolated system remains constant the total charge in an isolated system remains constant that is the definition of the conservation of charge right uh, the total charge in an isolated system remains constant or conserved right and 10.4 10.4 says that let's calculate the charge on each sphere after they have separated so the two spheres charge and then they separate so we need the new charge after they've separated right we have a formula for that uh, it is q nu so the charge the new charge on the spheres will be equals to q1 plus q2 divided by 2. by what is q1 we can take either x or y as q1 right it doesn't really matter so if we take x as q1 we're gonna have 4 times 10 to the minus 18 and then plus q2 which is y right uh, the charge of y is what we had to calculate ourselves uh, that is minus 4 times 10 to the minus 18 columns and then everything divided by 2 right and then if you go ahead and put that in your calculator you're gonna get a q nu of minus 4 times 10 to the minus 19 columns